players. Um, besides many other things, Beate is also a librarian, uh, but she doesn't work in the library, but in one of the German um, regional library consortia and library service centers. This one is KOBV in uh, Berlin, Brandenburg. They provide services for libraries, kind of intermediate between vendors and local libraries for public libraries, academic libraries. And Beate is going to talk about the changes and the challenges to these um, library service centers in, the, in this changing age of cloud computing and hosted services, etc. Um, first of all, I apologize a little because, because uh, as, as English is not my native tongue, I have to read a little bit. And because um, we are all heading for lunch, I guess, just give me a note when I should stop and then we do it in short. I will start in the very middle. So I will, I will start with a fairy tale. And I think this fairy tale you all know, it's the fairy tale of Snow White. So, you all know the, fo the fairy tale of Snow White, the seven little draft, drafts, the boys, the peacocky queen, and the mirror that never lies. So, mirror, mirror in my hand, who is the fairest in the land? And the mirror always replies, my queen, you are the fairest in the land. The queen, of course, is always pleased with that. But when Snow White reaches the age of seven, she becomes as beautiful as day and night. And when the queen asks her mirror again, it responds, my queen, you are the fairest here, so true. But Snow White is a thousand times more beautiful than you. And this is the moment when the crime begins. Of course, this is a story of narcissism, but I think this is also a story about transition. It's a story, it's a conflict between the new and the old. It's a conflict between the queen and her stepdaughter. It's a conflict between the elderly and the younger one. And in this sense, it could also work as a parable about the changing information infrastructure in Germany. The role of the magic mirror in my story is taken by the German Science Foundation and the German Council for Science and Humanities called Wissenschaftsrat. These organizations are acting ex as external, independent evaluators when it comes to questions such as what makes Germany as a whole sustainable as a research location? Why do we need these evaluators? We need them because library affairs are in the responsibility of the autonomy in cultural and educational matters of the 16 states. So in 2011, the six German library networks, library consortia, have undergone evaluation by the German Council of Science and Humanities. These consortia were founded in the 70s and the 80s as service institutions, mainly for academic libraries, by one or more of the federal states. And since then, these consortia are the kind of technical backbones of the academic libraries in Germany. And actually, they are doing pretty good services. But what did the magic mirror say? The magic mirror says, my dear library networks, you are the fairest here, so true, but there are new responsibilities waiting for you. Actually, the statement was very clear, and I quote, the regionally aligned structures of the library networks in Germany demonstrate serious weaknesses, in particular in the development and offer of innovative services for an efficient information infrastructure. Second, 
the potentials available in the network as a whole are not sufficiently exploited from a national perspective. Third, in the entire network of consortia, a primarily functional and bindingly coordinated distribution of tasks should be developed. This was hard stuff, actually, but I still have one more. The aim of the integration of catalogs and services that have so far been regionally organized on a national and international level is to avoid redundancies and a complexity of indexing structures that is no longer required today. Since then, I have intended what felt like 1,000 meetings, strategic and political meetings. I have read and wrote myself what felt like 1,000 pages of statements. Often unsaid, the main issue of these statements and meetings are the possible organizational changes and financial implications. But now I will do my moderator, me, and also you, favor and I will try not to talk about politics, at least not so much. Just one slide. I'd like to talk a little about the CME twins, politics and funding, just to express it positively. The budget of my consortia, the consortia where I come from, KUBV, is rather it's rather stable since 1997. To put it in other words, the budget has not increased. In this situation, project funding, for example, from the German Science Foundation, is rather important for innovative projects. So money is the key. This is what I wanted to say. Also, the German Science Foundation knows that money is the key and has announced a support program in order to initiate a restructuring process in the German library and German consortia landscape. So, so the subject of the tender were project ideas in the field of library data infrastructure and local, and local systems, ILSs. So I will not try to, um, to talk about politics, but instead of more general concepts. And I think the underlying concept of what we are talking here is the question of redundancies. So I'd like to talk a little bit about redundancy and uniqueness. So what are we talking about when we're talking about redundancies? I think we are talking about redundancies of data. So data have been which are created more than once and are maintained and indexed at multiple locations. When you are thinking about locks, for example, redundancy is a concept. So we need redundancy as a safety bottom in the sense of double stitched is better. However, do we really need multiple offers, redundancy of data, as in the sense of a double or a triple bottom for reasons of safety for metadata, for bibliographic data? I say from my experience that the stock of an average of academic library is anything but unique. Also, those metadata are anything but unique. The overlap is, this I can say from our consortia, is between 70 and 90 percent. Unique holdings are basically limited to rare books and to self-publications. By the way, this is completely different in archive and archives and museums. When we are talking about redundancy, we are also talking about redundancy of services. With the internet, we have become accustomed to redundancies, 
Actually, we do want redundancies. redundancies. Library holdings are meant to be available and visible in various environments, in the website, in the OPAD, in Google, in WorldCut, in virtual research environments, in the sites of cultural heritage initiatives, and in Wikipedia. However, do these duplications still scale if the, if the library says that it does not only index its own licenses, but also all information that are available about the topic? I think then we have to think about redundancies again. Back to the German situation. In Germany, what is lacking is a central data hub for this total stock of literature available in, in German libraries. When you want to know what is available in German libraries, you have to search six to seven locations, the regional consortia and the national library. By the way, also when we are talking about open data, this doesn't help, there are still seven hubs. Redundancy is also a matter of perspective. Um, uh, let's redundancy. Uh, yes, sorry. Redundancy is also a matter of, ex of perspective, and, and it's a matter of economics. Let's take the printer as an example. Where should the printer be located? I think this printer example you have it in in every institution. Should, everyone, should everybody have a printer for 60 euro, for 60, 60 euro at his own place? Should the printer be put on the corridor for 1,200 euro for 15 people? Do we want a printer for the entire working group of 30 people and we have to pay 4,200 euros for it? Or do we buy a printer for each building, for 100 people? Or do we, want to have a, do we want to have a printer for 500 people for the entire organization, but we have to pay 300,000 euros for it? Or do we print in the cloud? What do we want? By the way, the number of users from one to 500 or even more is roughly, roughly correspondence to the number numbers of meters you have to walk to get your printouts? The answer is not easy. The answer changes because prices are changing and also because, um, because requirements are changing. What is quite important to get an answer is also whom you ask. If you ask your IT manager, he will tend to favor a central solution, as will be the library director. Whereas when you ask the researcher, he will say, of course, I want my printer just next to me, near to me. I think because um, redundancy is also a matter of reference. I just want to say a few words about this because I want to get over this. I think when we are talking about redundancy, we have, to, we have to make clear where is our reference value. Is our reference value regional, national, or international, or even local? And I think we have, um, we have two, two things going on at the same time. So young researchers are operating in an international environment in many, many ways. I think Herbert van der Sample has also uh, explained this to us. But at the same time, we have uh, the return of the physical location. We have the return of the local environment. Actually, this is a trend in society as well. Just give you one example. In supermarkets and the gourmet cooking, regional products are advertised. Just, um, I think we have to think this as well. So now the cloud is coming. I think also that um, I don't have to tell you a lot, of, a lot about cloud services. 
which made its way already to our daily lives. We are storing mails, photos, videos, music, files, thoughts and ideas from daily life and work in, in the clouds, which is 90% situated in the US. I think it is important that cloud services will also, will also make their way into the sciences. For me, this is only a question of time. I'll give you one short example, or one small example. The Technical University of Berlin um, makes, which since May this year makes available cloud memory for its over 35,000 employees free of charge via its computing center. I think this is a very big step and a very important one because this service is extremely different from commercial storage providers, providers such as Google Drive or Dropbox. Bec and it's re-established the active role of the university in the management of scientific data. So, but let's get back to us to the libraries. I think this is also something you all know. The major vendors of library software, such as OCLC and Dex Libris, are also taking up the idea of the cloud for the new systems, such as Alma and we WMS. These new systems, in particular, promise better administrative support for the electronic resource management, and because of this, they are extremely attractive for the libraries. However, at the same time, there is a role change taking place. On the one hand, the former consortia systems and the local ILS systems are merging to form an integrated application. And on the other hand, vendors such as Ex Libris and OCLC are taking over the role of the consortia by hosting the systems and offering data management on an international level. Something to print. Do I still have five minutes? So what is now happening in Germany in this situation? In the response to the demand for the reori reorientation of the consortia structures in Germany, three out of six consortia have decided to give up their own databases in the medium run and to reinvent themselves in the emerging library cloud systems. This is a quite a big step. As an example for Germany, the KUBV, the Hessian, and the Bavarian Consortia, these are approximately 150 libraries intend to build the foundation for a structured migration into WorldCat, on the one hand, and into the Alma Cloud by Xlibris, on the other hand. This will make it also necessary that international environments open themselves up for local specifics, for language specifics, but also for, the, for our uh, language specific authority files. Why this step? The solution is intended by libraries that, wa that want to migrate their local systems and aim at efficiency gains due to the new applications. What is happening is that the reference frame is transferred from the regional perspective to the international level. And on the international level, I mean, this is an international conference, new cooperations between the libraries become possible. What is quite important against the background of the federalism, but also against the background of the autonomy of universities, a uniform cloud solution for Germany is not realistic. Even in our very small consortia, we have to expect 
heterogeneousness. Whereas the current RLF users are flirting with ALMA, CSIS users get attractive offers by OCLC. Thus, also in our small region, Berlin and Brandenburg, we probably will have, we have we will probably have not only one cloud, but two. From the data perspective, this means that we will not, that we still will have data redundancy as long as we are not able to create a unique identifier that applies across clouds. In, additional, in addition, intentionally, because we want this, Redundant data storage will continue to exist. Why? Because we still want a network of open data conceptually, which is intended on, an internet, on a national level so where data will be supplied from several clouds. And this data pool will then provide the basis for national services. There are many, many questions. Uh, more questions than answers, actually. For example, what is open is the role that open source initiatives such as Koali will play in this scenario. But there is no doubt, however, that they will play a role, an important one. Another aspect that is, that is also still open is the new role of the central offices of the consortia in, the con in this scenario. Are a consortia level and an intermediary facility, such as a consortia, is this still required between the vendors and the libraries? And if yes, what is the, what is the added value from the perspective of a library? How many, five more? I think it got clear that the consortia in Germany are heading for a very uncertain future. I said it already, many more questions than answers. So what is the best way to behave in such a situation? I think the magic word in this context is the concept of resilience. I don't know, has anybody heard about the concept of resilience? Yeah, he had my talk before, so this is why he heard that. Resilience means something like robustness and durability. Resilience is not only a term, it's a concept, and this concept comes from the material science, but it's also known in, develop, in the develop, um, developmental psychology. Today, resilience, I would uh, recommend that you Google it up that you Google up this concept, is not only a concept in management, politics, or economy, but it's also a key term in systematic future research. The idea is that living systems are inherently not orderly, in, as our, taxonom at our taxonomic view of nature likes to present. They are highly fragile, stable. I put it in a nutshell, and I quote Andrew Solly. A seemingly perfect system is often the most fragile, while a, while a dynamic system subject to occasional failure can be the most robust. Resilience is, like life itself, messy, imperfect, and inefficient, but it survives. So in my, in, in my opinion, also in the library world, it is worthwhile to, st to study resilience theories. In our small consortia at KOBB, we are trying to practice resilience by facing reality. Library clouds will come, and tasks and roles will change. We are trying resilience by establishing ourselves in new networks and undergoing perspective reconstruction Restructure, restructuring. This is about expanding our scope and responsibilities beyond libraries in the direction of archives and museums 
for which unique material is characteristic. We are also thinking about alternate fields of action, such as long-term preservation, where commercial solutions are hardly conceivable. And we are following and observing the new trend of the new local. So I could stop here, but I have one more slide. You want one more slide before lunch? It's about eating, by the way, in my last slide. So I would like, um, I would like to end exactly how I began, and I would like to end with another fairy tale, and this is a fairy tale about eating. And this fairy tale, I didn't found this fairy tale in uh, an encyclopedia with, with brims or something. I found this fairy tale in a blog on the subject of innovation culture. And it's a fairy tale that should encourage us all. Once upon a time, there was a king. This king loved to eat. He simply could not get enough. The king would eat everything. He would try anything. His desire for new creation, his appetite for the exotic, for new and sophisticated dishes could not be satisfied. The most important thing was he was the one to eat it first. Platybus egg filet in a nautilus shell, lion's eye papaya sorbet, unicorn tongue garnished with giant octopus rings, fermented archons in sweet sauerkraut, dino egg omelet, wall hay sushi. Desperation spread in the kitchen. There was nothing that the king hadn't eaten yet. All ingredients had been tasted in every combination. And just for once, for one single time, he demanded something new. The chief gave up. Helplessness and desperation was spreading when the young kitchen aide said for the sheer fun of it, I still have an apple in my backpack. I won't eat it anyway, it's too sour. And so the king was served a green sour apple. The king was delighted, had never ever experienced something so beautiful, such as fresh new taste. As a reward, the whole kitchen team was given a pony farm on which they all lived happily ever after. How to translate this fairy tale into the library world, I will now leave up to you and to, this, to the discussion during the conference. Thank you for listening. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, my interpretation of this last fairy tale is that Apple will be the solution for libraries. I'm not sure. But maybe you have another idea. By the way, I forgot to mention uh, Beata's current job, which is actually uh, associate director of this KWV consortium. So she knows what she's talking about. Are there any remarks or questions for Beata? There is one over there. OK, Christina. Thank you, Beata. It was rather interesting. I, I actually would have quite many comments, but I'd like to comment two points. First of all, the consortia, and then the open source. So I think it's a really good question to ask yourself, what is the added value through consortia? And I, I think there are very many dimensions on, on that. So if, if you only can say that it means cost savings, that's not enough. It, it has to mean also expertise, shared expertise, innovation. The consortia should be able to provide some new ideas to the network. Um, for these are some, some examples. What comes to the open source, so you, you might know, and actually I, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Kristina Hormia from Finland. I'm the director of, of a service center for all our libraries in the country. Um, and you might know that uh, Finland has sort of 
changed the route. So we, we used to use commercial solutions for our services for the libraries, but in a way we were forced to change our mind and opinion. And now, now we are quite intensively developing open source services. So you, you might know Finna, which is our discovery service, which already is in production. We are designing a new library system, and it will be based on open source. So you can imagine it's quite a big, big job and also risky one. Of course, we are working with uh, institutional repositories and web harvesting. So we have actually an ontology. We have a national ontology service. So we have really m very many open source uh, projects going on at the moment. So I, I invite you to follow what is happening in Finland. Is it too risky or sort of will, will it be the way to, to follow? And what has happened related to consortia? So they used to tell us that, um, that your services, they are too massive, they are too slow, there is no innovation. Now they have changed their opinion. Now they are saying, yes, you are moving so rapidly, but the libraries are too slow. So that wasn't really a question, I guess, but a comment. Do you want to comment on Christina's comment? OK. Um, anybody else? Otherwise, I think we can go to lunch. Oh, maybe there is someone from the local organizer who has something to say. Otherwise, we can go to lunch. Thank you very much.